Hello, and welcome to this week's Force.com cast episode. This is the second in our Sockle performance series, and today we're going to be talking about indexing and the uh, impact that indexing can have on your queries. So let's first of all talk through how a typical database index works. So what we have here is just what could be a, um, a table from any sort of standard uh, relational database, and we have a series of columns. We have the ID, last name, national ID, and the date of birth. And then in the ID column, we have um, just sets of data, um, and it's just an auto number ID. So this would be our primary key if we were working in any other database. We're going to have some last names, which is just text, a national ID, which could be a social security number or a, um, a national insurance number or a health number. Uh, and that's just a string of numbers and some text. And then finally, we have a date of birth, which is just in standard European format. So the way in which um, uh, an index works, and one of the fields that is always indexed, um, is the ID field. So an index works by having the data stored in um, an ordered format. So you can see here, for example, that the ID field, which is always indexed, is stored in a standard format. It's stored in order, so it goes up from uh, one upwards. And if we want to find the row with a particular ID value, it's very, very simple for the system to just go through, search down all of the rows, and find the one with the correct number because it has them in order. So say we wanted to find um, the row with ID number three here, we would just go to the uh, go to the correct row because it would be stored in memory for us. And uh, if you wanted to go and sort of big O notation about how the system would search through it, would you could find out um, all the reasons why this is faster. But the long and short is, it's because it is in an ordered format. It's much easier for the system to go to the row directly. So what if we wanted to use a different field, such as the national ID, to index? So the way in which an index works is that it takes a copy of this and a copy of the ID and creates a brand new table for us. And this table has the national ID field in the correct order and has the ID field just matching up to it. So if now we wanted to search for what was the ID for um, uh, the Obama record a minute ago, which was ID number three, we'd look for the national ID of 889002765G. And because all of the national IDs are in order, we'd be able to go down the table find that in the correct position, retrieve the ID for it, and then retrieve the full record from our previous table. And this is a lot quicker than having to do a full table search, where in the previous system, uh, in, in the previous page, we'd have had to have gone through every row in the database to find the value we wanted. So that's how a typical database index works, um, and it's fairly logical to see. Salesforce has a slightly different method, and this is because Salesforce has its tables set up to have flex columns. So what's a flex column and how does it work? So um, on a custom object, you can have up to 500 fields that store data in them. Um, and they're all stored in one big table in the background as text. And what Salesforce does is at runtime, it retrieves the value from the correct uh, cell in the correct column and returns it and you know, does a conversion into the correct data format. So a sort of table that we might have is a global unique identifier, a GUID, um, the org ID of which you're working, an ID for the object on which this is, against which this is stored. We'll have some other data values, but then we'll have these 500 flex columns. And what we can do is we can store any sort of data in there. And for each object, the data type will be the same. But uh, the actual column itself has no fixed um, you know, strict data type other than just the strings that are stored there. So, what we can see here is we can see that you know, although the object ID is again in order and you know, is nicely indexed for us, you know, what if we wanted to use uh, these values here, which, for example, might store um, some date represented as a long number, so are often stored in this way. How would we work, uh, go about working with that? So what we would do is we would create a new index where what we would have is copy these two rows, and we put them into specific field values. So you'd see here that we again have an ID of one or two. We have, again, the global unique ID. And then what we have is um, a column that is specific to string values, a column that would be specific to date values, uh, which would be stored in numbers here, and so on and so forth. And so we'd enter that value into the number value column, store the value there, and that would become, uh, then we would index it as we normally would. 
So Salesforce has this intermediary index table that goes away and stores the values in a predefined format and then indexes the entire column for us to allow it to be found much more quickly. So that's how Salesforce's indexing works, but what does it mean? So because of how Salesforce requires to put these pieces together, only certain fields are indexed by default. These include record type ID, a division, creator date, um, system mod stamp or last modified date, um, the name field, email on contacts and leads is automatically indexed, so it makes it quick to search for contacts and leads by email address. Any foreign key relationship, so what will be lookups and master details for us, uh, the standard Salesforce ID as we mentioned. But if we want to index any other fields, we can only index text, auto numbers, emails and number fields. Um, and what the system will do is it will go away, take a copy of those values, put them into a, uh, a number value column or a text value column, as we, or string value column as we saw a minute ago, and index them in the standard way that uh, a database would work. So that's how indexing works, and in next week's video, we're going to discuss how you can improve selectivity and what selectivity is, so that you can better, um, so that you can have your SQL queries run better and be more performant.